there was a girl named Vali Abmai, who was called Vali for short. She was eight years old. Her favorite pastime, was standing in the front doorway of her house, watching what was happening in the street outside. She had no friends of her age in the street. And this was about all she had to do. But, for Vali, standing at the front door, was as enjoyable as any of the games other children played. Watching the street gave her many new, unusual experiences. The most fascinating thing of all, was the bus that traveled between her village and the nearest town. It passed through her street each hour, once going to the town, and once coming back. The sight of the bus, filled each time with a new set of passengers, was a source of unending joy for Valley. Day after day, she watched the bus, and gradually, a tiny wish crept into her head. I want to ride on that bus, even if just once. This wish became stronger and stronger, and became an overwhelming desire. Valley would stare wistfully at the people, who got on or off the bus when it stopped at the street corner, wistfully, longingly. If one of her friends happened to ride the bus, and tried to describe the sights of the town to her, Valley would be too jealous to listen, and would shout, in English, Proud. Proud. Why would she say, proud? Actually, she and her friends didn't really know what the word meant, but they often used it to show, they didn't like something. Over many days and months, Valley listened carefully, to conversations between her neighbors, and people who regularly used the bus, and she also asked a few questions here and there. This way, she picked up various small details about the bus. What details? The town was six miles from her village. The fare was thirty pays one way. She heard one well-dressed man say, The fare is thirty pays one way, which is almost nothing at all. But, to Valley, who scarcely saw that much money, it seemed a fortune. The trip to the town takes 45 minutes. On reaching town, if I stay in my seat, and paid another 30 pesos, I can return home on the same bus. She calculated and recalculated, planned and replanned. One fine day, the afternoon bus was just about to leave the village, when a small voice was heard. Stop the bus. Stop the bus. Hurry then. Tell whoever is to come quickly. It's me. I'm the one who has to get on. Oh, really? You don't say so? Yes. I simply have to go to town. And I have the money. Okay, okay, but first you must get on the bus. Hold my hand. Never mind. I can get on by myself. You don't have to help me. The conductor was a cheerful person, fond of joking. Oh, please don't be angry at me, my fine madam. Have a seat in front. Everybody, please move aside. Make way for madam. It was the slack time of day. Slack time, when there is not much work. And there were only six or seven passengers on the bus. They were all looking at Valley, and laughing with the conductor. Valley was filled with shyness. Avoiding everyone's eyes, she walked quickly to an empty seat, and sat down. May we start now, madam? The he blew his whistle twice, and the bus moved forward with a roar. It was a new bus, its outside painted a shining white, with some green stripes along the sides. Inside, the overhead bar shone like silver. Directly in front of Valley, there was a beautiful clock. The seats were soft and luxurious. Valley devoured everything with her eyes. Devour, to eat something hungrily means, Valley absorbed every detail around her in her eyes. But when she started to look outside, her view was cut off by a canvas blind that covered the lower part of her window. A canvas blind is a curtain on a bus window. So, she stood up on the seat and looked over the blind. The bus was going along the bank of a canal. On one side there was the canal and, beyond it, palm trees, grassland, distant mountains, and the blue, blue sky. On the other side, was a deep ditch. And then, acres and acres of green fields. Green, 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 as far as the eye could see. Oh, it was so wonderful. Listen, child. You shouldn't stand like that. Sit down. Sitting down, she looked to see who had spoken. It was an elderly man who had honestly been concerned for her. But she was annoyed by his attention. There's nobody who is a child. 
I've paid my 30 pesos, like everyone else. Oh, sir, but this is a very grown-up madam. Do you think a mere girl could pay her own fare, and travel to the city all alone? I am not a madam. Please remember that. And you've not yet given me my ticket. I'll remember. Everyone laughed, and gradually, Valley too laughed. The conductor punched a ticket, and handed it to her. Just sit back and make yourself comfortable. Why should you stand when you have paid for the ticket? Because I want to. But, if you stand on the seat, you may fall and hurt yourself when the bus makes a sharp turn, or hits a bump. That's why I want you to sit down, child. I am not a child, I tell you. I am eight years old. Of course. Of course. How stupid of me. Eight years. My. <laughs> the bus stopped, some new passengers got on, and the conductor got busy for a time. Afraid of losing her seat, Valley finally sat down. An elderly woman came, and sat beside her. Are you all alone, dear? Valley found the woman absolutely repulsive, such big holes she had in her earlobes, and such ugly earrings in them. And she could smell the betel nut the woman was chewing, and see the betel juice that could spill over her lips at any moment. Betel nut, a seed that is chewed? Sipari. Ugh. Who could be sociable with such a person? Yes, I am traveling alone, and I have a ticket too. Yes, she's on her way to town. With a 30 pays ticket. Oh, why you don't mind your own business? <laughs> is it proper for such a young person to travel alone? Do you know exactly where you're going in town? What's the street? What's the house number? You needn't bother about me. I can take care of myself. Her first journey. What careful, painstaking, elaborate plans she had had to make for it. She had saved whatever stray coins came her way, resisting every temptation to buy peppermints, toys, balloons etc. And finally she had saved a total of 60 pays. How difficult it had been. That day at the village fair, but she had controlled her desire of riding the merry-go-round, to save the money. After she had saved enough money, her next problem was, how to slip out of the house, without her mother's knowledge. How did she solve this problem? Every day after lunch, her mother would sleep from about 1 o'clock, to 4 o'clock. Normally, Val used these hours for excursions, as she stood looking at the street from her doorway, and sometimes even went out in the village. Excursion, journey. Today, these hours were used for her first excursion outside the village, by the afternoon bus. The bus continued its journey, sometimes crossing a barren landscape, other times, a small village, or an odd roadside store. Sometimes, the bus appeared to be on the point of colliding with another vehicle or a person crossing the road. But somehow, it managed to pass smoothly, leaving all the obstacles behind. Trees seemed to run towards the bus, but, as the bus reached, the trees stopped for a moment, and then, ran to the other direction. Suddenly, Valley clapped her hands in joy. A young cow, tail high in the air, was running very fast, right in the middle of the road, right in front of the bus. The bus slowed to a crawl, and the driver sounded his horn loudly again and again. But the more he honked, the more frightened the animal became and the faster it ran, always right in front of the bus. Somehow, this was funny to Valley. <laughs> hey, lady, haven't you laughed enough? Better save some for tomorrow. At last, the cow moved off the road. And soon, the bus came to a railroad crossing. A train could be seen from the distance. Then, it rushed past the crossing gate, with a loud sound, shaking the bus. The bus went on, and passed the train station. From there, it crossed a busy shopping street, and from there, it entered a wider thoroughfare. Thoroughfare, a busy public road. Such big, bright-looking shops. What glittering displays of clothes and other things for sale. Such big crowds. Struck dumb with wonder. Valley stared at everything. The bus stopped, and everyone got off. Except Valley. Hey, lady, aren't you ready to get off? 
This is as far as your 30 pace takes you. No, I'm going back on the same bus. Why? Is something the matter? Nothing is the matter. I just felt like having a bus ride, that's all. Don't you want to have a look at the sights, now that you're here? All by myself? Oh, I'd be much too afraid. But you weren't afraid to come in the bus. Nothing to be afraid of about that. Well, then, why not go to that stall over there, and have something to drink? Nothing to be afraid of about that either. Oh, no, I couldn't do that. Well, then, let me bring you a cold drink. No, I don't have enough money. Just give me my ticket, that's all. It'll be my treat, and not cost you anything. No, no. Please, no. Won't your mother be looking for you? No, no one will be looking for me. The bus started, and again there were the same wonderful sights. Still, Valley wasn't bored, and greeted everything with the same excitement she had felt the first time. But suddenly, she saw, by the roadside, a young cow was lying dead, where it had been struck by some vehicle. Isn't that the same cow, that ran in front of the bus, on our trip to town? Yes. She was filled with sadness. What had been a lovable, beautiful creature, just a little while ago, had now suddenly lost its charm, and its life. And looked so horrible, so frightening, as it lay there, legs spread out, a fixed stare in its lifeless eyes, blood all over. The bus moved on. The memory of the dead cow haunted her, lowering her enthusiasm. She no longer wanted to look out the window. She sat thus, glued to her seat, until the bus reached her village at 3.40. She stood up and stretched herself. Well, sir, I hope to see you again. Okay, madam. Whenever you feel like a bus ride, come and join us. And don't forget to bring your fare. She laughed and jumped down from the bus. Then she went, running, straight for home. When she entered her house, she found her mother awake and talking to one of Valley's aunts, the one from South Street. This aunt was a real chatterbox, never closing her mouth once she started talking. And where have you been? Her aunt just spoke casually, not expecting an answer. So Valley just smiled, and her mother and aunt continued their conversation. Yes, you're right. So many things in our midst, and in the world outside. How can we possibly know about everything? And even when we do know about something, we often can't understand it completely, can we? Oh, yes. What? What's that you say? Oh. I was just agreeing with what you said about things happening without our knowledge. Just a chit of a girl, she is. And yet look how she pokes her nose into our conversation. As though she were a grown lady. Valley smiled to herself. Why did she smile? And why did she agree to her mother's statement about the things happening without knowledge? The scene of the dead cow made her realize that many things happen without her knowledge. She was enjoying her ride when she didn't know that the cow was dead. She felt sad only after knowing that. That's why she smiled. She didn't want them to understand her smile. But, then, there wasn't much chance of that. Was there? This way, Valley fulfilled her dream of riding the bus. But also learned the hard lesson about the fragility of life. Please like and share this video, and subscribe my channel for more animated videos of class 10.